face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys? And of course, welcome to an episode of Who Was, of course, really better. And before we go into this episode, I'm going to do a small disclaimer because we're actually uploading this on a first day instead of a Sunday. It has a lot to do with it. I'm going away throughout Easter, which means that I won't be able to do any recordings prior. And also means a lack of content. And I really just want to get this out to you guys. So with that said, we're going to look, of course, Durant versus Escavalier. It also should be said that I usually do say it wrong when it comes to Escavalier. I do say it wrong every time, and I'm okay with that. So, <laughs> without any further introduction, we're of course gonna mention, of course, it's typing itself, because it's quite a rare typing. Introduced, of course, Generation 2 with Cicero and Fretress, wasn't revisited until Generation 4 with Warmadan, and then, of course, again, Generation 5 with, of course, Durand and Escavalier. And of course, Genesec 2, of course, that extent until then, has been introduced again. Then it's a very, very strong typing combination. So it's surprising thing to see that they aren't used more often. So with, of course, that said, what makes this typing so great? Well, just look at it. It has immunity to poison. It resists strongly grass. It resists bug, dragon, fairy, ice, normal, psychic, steel, and a four times weak to fire, which sure... It's a big weakness, usually KO the Pokemon itself, but it has so many immunities and uh, not immunities, so many resistances going on that are just out of this world. The type of combination itself are just pushing the boundaries so well, which only makes it more frustrating to see that these type of combinations are not revisited that often, as of course we actually have been waiting six years for a new Pokemon with, of course, this type of combination. So, of course, with that said, we are, of course, going to go over their stats. Now, Durant has actually not the bulkiest kind of HP, with, of course, 58 versus, of course, the Cavalier 70. When it comes to attack, uh, while, of course, uh, Durant does spike at 109, the Cavalier does have 135. The only thing that here that Durant wins on is, of course, its offensive, with, of course, 112 versus 105. When it comes to special attack, Durant does not have anything to, of course, go on to it with 48 in both special attack and special defense. Well, of course, Escavalier, not famous for his special attack, does have 60. And, of course, his special defense is 105. So, very, very leaping high in special defense, considering, of course, his type of combination. And, of course, the speed here. Here's where, of course, Durant does spike really well. 109 versus puny, puny, puny 20. So, surprisingly... Durant is actually not to be considered, of course, offensively the strong between these two, which is something I really want to mention, because actually going into this episode, I was pretty sure that Cavalier was not as strong as Durant, and the reason that is is because of the hustle. Durant has one of the worst abilities in the game when it comes to Swarm and Truant not doing much worse. Truant especially, of course, being, well, let's say it, meh, it, it's not gonna save it any day soon. But of course, being of course you can't attack two turns in a row, you're actually gonna have to of course rest between. Which is incredibly, incredibly bad. Anyway, hustle. Hustle is an ability that works like choice, but you boost your of course offensive by 50%, but you lose your accuracy. You go from of course 100 percent accurate to 80% accurate, which means you're much, much of course offensively re reliable when it comes to actually not being able to stand, of course, your hits. But a choice banded extra power, yeah. That's pretty darn dangerous. And when it comes to Scavaldier, it has Shell Armor and Swarm, not its strongest ability. It should be mentioned Shell Armor is great, but Overcoat is where it's at with, of course, being able to take on any powder move without actually getting offensive. Check or actually being able to, of course, be accounted for them. And, of course, being able to, of course, immune to, of course, Hail. Not being affected by that is definitely a big deal. The Steel Time itself does, of course, save it from the Sandstorm. But even being able to, of course, not get into the from hill, yeah, that's actually kind of a nice extra niche for it. So a quick rundown between, of course, stats and actual abilities alone would actually state that Escavaldir definitely a more defensive one. While it does have, of course, a very high attack stat, it is focused on being defensively well-rounded. While looking at two actually Durant, it has more actually in common with Cartana. Being it has leaping high attack now, with of course Hustle in mind, has a good defense, has a good speed here, and everything else is just. meh. <laughs> it's there. But that's really about it. So, if we're gonna have to separate them, it's going to be, of course, on their move pool, if anything. 
So when it comes to of course a shared move pool, there really aren't that much. While they both get proper stabbing of course Iron Head and Exisor, and both actually do not get Leech Life this generation, which is super super unfortunate. It actually is quite incredible because it does damage them somewhat. But it's worth mentioning that they have proper stabs of course, but that's where it all ends. While it does have minor moves that are of course shared, they aren't actually versatile or relevant for of course the meta itself. So with that said, let's talk of course about Durant. Durant's move pool can definitely be summed up in a very very simple statement. It's shallow, but relevant. Because while Durant doesn't get a lot of moves, it just gets the likes of two supporting moves in agility if you want to utilize that and of course Honeclaw. Hornclaw definitely one of the bigger niches going on with it, mainly because of course it does boost its accuracy with of course Hustle in mind. Other than that, it does get the likes of Dig, Crunch, Superpower. For most, Superpower is one of the strongest fighting of course attacks in the game and very, very, very dangerous just in general to be able to be forced to be dealing with. It does get of course a faint attack which of course don't are able to miss. And of course we get the likes of Stone Edge and of course Rock Slide. I uh, should also mention that it does get the likes of Shadow Claw and Thunder Wave. While Thunder Wave doesn't sound all that great to some extent, it is a supporting move it does is able to utilize well, mainly because it does force offensive checks, and being able to actually paralyze offensive checks might actually raise the stamina of Durant's of course move pull itself. So with that said, that's really all it gets, it's all the relevant moves it gets. And quite honestly, it's it's very, very, very shallow, but as stated, it still is super relevant. Now, Escavalier, on the other hand, just get a lot of moves. And when I say a lot, I freaking mean a lot. It's one of those Pokemon that just, it, just, it surprises you on the things it can do. Uh, first of all, of course, it gets Fell Stinger and Sword Stance. The reason I want to chose Fell Stinger in this kind of environment is because it got a boost this generation and actually raise your course attack by 3 if you KO. As for sense, still as relevant as ever, of course, it does get also Iron Defense, you want to utilize that. And then, of course, the content, of course, is Move Pool alone. It does get the likes, of course, Air Lace. It gets Brutal Swing, Smart Strike, you want to utilize that, or Iron Head. It does get Poison Jab. When it comes, of course, it's Move Pool from, of course, Breeding. It actually gets Mega Horn, which, of course, is stronger than Next Sister. And then it gets Pursuit, people Pursuit Trap things. It gets Counter. It also gets Faint Attack, actually, and Knock Off Drill Run. And Knockoff definitely is one that stands out a little bit. It is definitely one of those mods that just screams relevance. And then of course, there's a special move you want to utilize that yourself. It just get a lot of Giga Drain. But there's where it all ends. But it has a lot of things going on. Drill Run definitely is one of those things to be able to, of course, offensively check, of course, any kind of a fire type that want to come in on it. Shibish said, though, that its move pool is also very, very relevant but aren't as denting as Duran's move pool, but still as versatile, if not even more. And knockoff, of course, who can forget? It is definitely one of the best moves in the game, still this generation, and it's a very, very good move to have on a Pokemon with, of course, this defensive caliber. So with all this said, one really has to just look into this, of course, objectively. Which Pokemon is more relevant in this kind of matchup? Escavalier is one of those Pokemon that defensively just triumphs. It can stay in against so many matchups. It can do so freaking well. And of course, with a Soul's Vest or Leftovers of Mind, it can actually set up. Or with a Soul's Vest, being able to soak a hit and retaliate. Hell, I've seen set that utilize, of course, the likes of Trick Room to be able to, of course, offensively uh, utilize its speed to its actually peak because it's so few things that does outspeed it. So, Cavalier will, of course, knock off Drill Run, Mega Horn. Iron Head in mind, there are so many things going on that does make it relevant. And then of course, enter Durant. Durant has a lot of things that does work against it. Hustle, while of course one of the best abilities in the game depending on how you view it, does of course leave a few things to desire. It can either save a game or change the game in your disadvantage by one turn. Swarm, not as usable, but as you guys can see, it does have the stats and the speeds here to be very, very formidable. And there is where the, kind of the key with around this, and one of the biggest perks is that it is able to outspeed so many things. It is able to, of course, with its typing in mind, to be able to set up a horn claw, to be able to not necessarily hit your opponent. And of course, with C moves in mind, which are 100% accurate, Durant is able to usually hit the target no matter what situation and get the hustle boost. So, after I've thought about this long and hard, it comes down to one of those very, very, very poor decisions. And I'm going to say this straight on at it. 
I do deem these Pokemons to be worthy enough to be evaluated in different fashion, and they are stronger in different environment, but if I had to pick a Pokemon that are consistently good, I'm actually gonna give that victory too. Can we get a bit of a drum roll? Drumped. Yeah. And I need to explain myself, because I said consistently good, and it's very clear that shouldn't Escavalier be the one that are consistently good? Well, I'll say to some extent yes, but we have to take consideration the speed here. Durant is freaking NASCAR. And sure, there are a plethora of situations where I would say Escavalier is able to soak a hit and retaliate, but with Durant, you don't have to do that. While Hass Hustle can miss, I get that. But with Homeclaw in mind, Durant solves its worst issue. Escavalier's worst issue is its speed, and it's not able to actually capitalize on that and actually turn it against it. Trick Room is an option, definitely, but th that does mean it does have a team to actually be built around it, be able to support it that much. Durant needs itself. It can solve a game for itself, and it's such a big perk with Hustle in mind. And attack set, I mean, 112, you know what's happening with a banded possible hit with Iron Head? You die. A lot. And with, of course, Honeclaw in mind, that means that you have now a Sword Stance boosted hit that are 100% accurate on a mod that has a very broad move pool. And it also, I actually forgot to mention, it does get Thunder Fang when I utilize that, but trust me, you don't. But Durant is just, it has one of those caliber Pokemon that do this typing are able to set up without necessarily the biggest issues because it's speedy enough to outspeed the things that might be possible to wall it. And after one Honeclaw, that's no longer true. Durant necessarily are one of those Pokemon that just offensively pressure turn one. Escavalier is one of those Pokemon that defensively works well with every team. Assault Vest version is definitely one of the more preferable ones. And it's not a bad Pokemon, not by a long shot. But if I have to take a pick here of which Pokemon are offensively better, then Durant just is that option. And defensively, it are able to, of course, pull the hits. It is able to soak the hits it needs to. While, of course, special defensively, it isn't as capable it, due to, of course, its resistances. It at least is able to switch in and actually find an environment through that. So, Durant wins here because it's offensively scarier than Escavalier. But it should be mentioned, Escavalier has a relevance, but in my honest opinion, if I have to choose between them, Durant is just that much more scarier than Escavalier, and it has to be accounted for with C moves in mind. And of course, that all out pummel, which now is. It's a death move, easily for the likes of Durant. So, with that said, guys, what do you guys think? Which one of these Pokemon do you guys prefer? Because I'm finding a way in this kind of environment, because as stated, they are similar in different ways, but in my honest opinion, the reason Durant wins is because it can solve its biggest issues, which of course is its accuracy actually. While Durant is just that kind of mod that just can settle a game, Escavalier is not that type of Pokemon, it can solve its own issue, it just supports team better, but just as a standalone Pokemon are not as impressive as Durant. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and of course, watch out for of course, the next episode where we are going to settle the deal between these guys. Take care, bye.